Hello class 12 children, good morning. Welcome back. This is your yogi sir teaching you online class English paper 2 or English literature. Uh, in fact, this is your uh, first class after your unit test got over. Before your unit test, we were doing the textbook echoes and in this we were seeing a new story. Uh, the story of an art written by an American author, Kate Chopin. Uh, but before uh, we continue with the remaining portion of the story, I just would like to uh, tell you a bit about the official information that uh, last time I had uh, uh, sent you a message regarding your boards, uh, regarding a board fee uh, that is 3500 and uh, you were also to uh, clear all the dues uh, you have uh, till July 2020. And uh, to say many of you also haven't enrolled and registered your name uh, for the set class, class 12. Uh, you are uh, suggested to do it at the earliest because uh, the last date is also given to you, 15th of August 2020. Uh, this is the council's uh, I mean, uh, fee uh, that you are to deposit. Uh, please do it uh, uh, promptly because uh, even a single day uh, that you um, um, delay uh, would uh, divide a fine by the board. Please uh, uh, try to understand this and uh, uh, do it at the earliest. Okay, so let's, let's come back to uh, see all the story, the remaining portion, the story of an hour. Um, let me just okay, uh, give you a recap of what we had done in the beginning of the story. So the story of an hour uh, was formally entitled uh, the dream of an hour as I told you uh, and it was written uh, on April uh, 29 uh, in the year 1894 but uh, it was retitled and uh, read, uh, uh, republished uh, in 1895 as the story of an hour. So what happens in the opening of the story you have already seen uh, we see the scene takes place in uh, Mr. Brintley Mallard's house and we get uh, straight away into, uh, uh, introduced to we are uh, straight away introduced to uh, Mrs. Lucy Mallard. Uh, she is the wife of uh, Mr. Brentley Mallard. And uh, uh, as far as Mrs. Lucy Mallard is concerned, she is uh, a heart weak patient. And everyone has been very careful uh, to nurture her to take care of her because uh, she is uh, a heart weak patient. And uh, we all know uh, a person suffering from heart disease. You have to be very very careful uh, in the dealings uh, with uh, such person and uh, you see uh, that day Mr. Brenty Mallard had taken leave from home and uh, uh, he was off to uh, some of his official tax perhaps and uh, you get a news that uh, there was a uh, train accident and uh, you see uh, Brenty Mallard's friend Richards uh, was the first person to uh, get the information, get the news that uh, uh, in this uh, train accident, Mr. Brentley Mallard is also um, a victim, right? He is succumbed to death, uh, as said. And uh, here, however, Mr. Richards was unable to deliver this news to the Hartwick patient, uh, Mrs. Mallard, and uh, thus uh, Richards uh, finds Mrs. Mallard's sister, younger sister, whose name is uh, whose name is uh, Josephine uh, to deliver this news to her right so Richards and Josephine uh, come and uh, meet Mrs. Mallard and uh, uh, indirectly uh, uh, she delivers the news to Mrs. Mallard Mrs. Mallard after hearing this uh, is seen into tears uh, she feels very uh, sad on hearing this news and uh, later she uh, wants to uh, be alone in her room. So she goes uh, up stairs and then uh, uh, opens the door of her room and then gets inside. Uh, she from the locks the door from inside and uh, she takes there an armchair and sits there. The armchair uh, straight up faces the window, the open window that looked outside uh, uh, the beautiful um, picture of uh, uh, the um, I mean, uh, just now, uh, um, 
rainfall and uh, see also here's the chirping of the birds sparrows and all and uh, she enters into uh, her own uh, 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 I mean okay uh, mind then right so she began to recall of the moment that of the house is now going to live her life being alone all alone without her husband right and uh, uh, she uh, uh, sees um, outside and suddenly she finds a change in herself she um, understands herself that now she is a free lady right uh, because uh, there is no uh, husband to govern her now to uh, say anything to her now to uh, dominate okay her now right so that was a uh, uh, feel uh, what we saw so till there we had seen in our last day class right so now what happens in the remaining part of the story uh, let us continue so we were on page number 55 if i'm not mistaken uh, so we were to begin today uh, with the last paragraph okay please see if you are with the textbook and uh, as I always tell, uh, whenever you are uh, explained something from the text and uh, whenever you are uh, coming across the difficult words and uh, it is uh, simplified um, uh, with the uh, meanings, uh, please uh, jot them down, write them down so as to make yourself easy uh, uh, to understand whenever you sit for revision of the chapters. So here we go then. So see. She did not stop to ask if it were or were not a monstrous joy that held her. So she was unable to decide what kind of, what kind of emotion she, uh, emotions okay, she had in herself. right? So she did not stop to ask if it were or were not a, a monstrous joy that held her. So on one side she is okay, um, uh, feeling here that she is going to acquire a terrible joy in her life. Because then there is no one uh, who can govern her. Right? So she is okay living her life uh, independently. Right? That is what uh, she believes. And see, a clear and exalted perception enabled her to dismiss the session as trivial. And you see, a clear and exalted perception. That means, um, uh, like uh, she is well aware of something now. Right? That is going to uh, come to her. So enabled her to dismiss the session as trivial. Trivial means small. Right? So whatever is going to come to her in her life now, she takes it a small thing right now see she knew that she would weep again when she saw the kind tender hands fold it in death and she knew that she is again going to cry when uh, the dead body of mr brenty mallard would be brought at home right so naturally right any uh, like a, a person or a member of the house uh, on seeing the dead body of the person of the home right uh, would uh, uh, shed into tears so she is also uh, prepared to do this she is also ready to do this right so she is uh, again going to cry when she would see her uh, dead husband right the face that had never looked safe with uh, love upon her now you see the face her husband's face mr brenty mallard's face that had never looked safe safe means okay accept right with love upon her so mr brenty mallard had always loved his wife uh, uh, mrs uh, uh, lucy mallard right and uh, when such a person is dead and is brought at home right um, uh, that would be a cause uh, for mrs uh, lucy mallard to uh, shed into tears a bucket full of tears now you see fixed and gray and dead right so her eyes will be fixed right and uh, uh, the body would be gray so she would be uh, sad gray here refers to sad right uh, and uh, uh, of course he would be dead now you see but she saw beyond that bitter moment a long process procession of years to come that would belong to her absolutely but at the same time she saw a long future ahead right how she is going to manage her life without a loving husband right so see and she opened and spread her arms out to them in welcome right but whatever happened so happened now she is to live her life for the rest of her life right so she stretched her arm as if right to welcome uh, the years to come right now see so as she was uh, grieving on the news of her husband's death right uh, another feeling brims up from the core of her heart right and uh, uh, this empowers her grief that means uh, this, uh, this very okay uh, uh, feeling which is brimful in her now in the core of her heart is going to overpower her grief 
Now slowly she began to uh, forget uh, her um, grief now. Right? Something new has uh, now uh, come to her. Right? Perhaps okay, this is uh, um, a thing which she is talking about. She is now going to lead uh, a life of uh, freedom, a life of liberty, a life of independence. Right? Now see, there would be no one to leave for her during those coming years. Now, now she looks right forward uh, to the days ahead instead of fearing them now. Right? Now, why to fear? Because uh, uh, if you fear now, how you are going to survive in your life? Right? So, better is to forget of all the past and uh, uh, travel ahead in your future. So, that is what here Mrs. Lucy Mallard thought. Right? And then see. There would be no one to leave for her during those coming years. So, she would be living her life all alone. Right? She would leave for herself. And she also will have to leave for herself. Right? Because uh, uh, she would have no husband then. Right? Her husband is dead as uh, uh, the news came to her. Now see, there would be no powerful willing bending hers in that, in that blind persistence with which men and women believe they have a right to impose a private will upon a fellow creature. Now see, so there would be no powerful will. That means there won't be any kind of dominancy in her life. Right? They, uh, uh, when Mr. Mallard, uh, when Mr. Mallard was there at home, so he is the head of the house, and whatever the head of the house would uh, tell, right, and the rest of the family members will have to, uh, um, will have to obey, will have to do as per, uh, as per the head of the house, uh, as per the head of the house is saying, right. So now this thing uh, would not dominate her, right. Uh, in that blind persistence, that means she is going to now live her life continuously in that blind. Uh, uh, being very blind now see with which men and women believe they have a right to impose a private will upon a fellow creature now every okay buddy has a private will to carry on right so everybody wants to leave uh, independently right everybody wants to leave a life of liberty okay so that's what he had Lucy Mallard felt in herself right a kind intention or a cruel intention made the act seems uh, seem no less a crime as he looked upon it in that uh, brief moment of elimination that means now she began to find herself right uh, freedom right now um, um, is okay, eliminated in front of her so there is a bright sign of freedom in front of her right uh, freedom is now what she focuses because i am now going to live a life of freedom she feels this because there is no one uh, who can dominate me uh, in my uh, life to live ahead right that's what uh, lucy mallard felt then see, and yet she had loved him sometimes. And in terms of loving her husband, of course, she had loved her husband so so much, right? Uh, if not regularly, sometimes she says. Often she had not. So most of the cases she has not been able to love her husband, right? There are uh, many kind of uh, many kind uh, many kinds of okay, reasons uh, for the couple not to be happy with each other. You all know, right? Then see, what did it matter, right? So it matters not. What could love, the unsolved mystery, count for in face of this possession of self-assertion, which she suddenly recognizes the strongest impulse uh, of her being, right? Now, what uh, she believes is, she is to live her life, she is to love her life, she is to live her life, because it is she now she is going to live her life ahead, right, in the absence of her husband, right? Now, she is to love uh, herself, right now, and to live her life in the life of liberty. Now, see... <clears throat> Free body and soul free. She kept whispering. So seated on in the armchair, she began to whisper. She began to say softly, right? Free. Now I'm free. Right? My body is free. My soul is free. Right? So I'm going to live a life of freedom, she says. So on one side, place she is happy also. Right? That she is going to live a life of freedom. Because nobody wants to be dominated by anyone. Right? You want to live a life of freedom. Right? So that's what here uh, uh, she began to feel in herself uh, in the change mood what we saw. Right? Josephine was kneeling before the closed door with her lips to the keyhole imploring for admission. Right? Lucy, open the door. I beg open the door. You will make yourself ill. What are you doing Lucy? For heaven's sake open the door. On the other side her sister. Right? Josephine. She also came up the stairs and uh, uh, from the uh, keyhole of the door, she was peeping in, right? 
and then uh, she spoke to her elder sister uh, mrs lucy malad right she was imploring she was requesting right for admission please allow me come in open the door right open the door she was telling right so i okay request you to open the door otherwise you will fall sick if you lock yourself right uh, like this on the news of your uh, husband's demise right so you will fall you will suffer so better open the door and let us in right or you be out right so what are you doing lucy this is not the way she said for heaven's sake open the door so for god's sake open the door she said now from inside right lucy malar says go away i am not making myself ill but the right response comes from lucy malar telling her sister josephine to go away right so i am not uh, uh, making myself ill i am all right right she said no she was drinking in a very exilier of life through that open window right so no she said right she was drinking in a very exilier exilier means is a type of uh, you can say uh medicinal solution that she is deriving looking outside the window right so she was looking outside the open window and uh, perhaps right this is a medicine to her right she has already stepped into a new life that she would like to live a life of freedom right that's why she is telling her sister as you find right that she would not uh, make herself ill she is fit and fine out there right then see her fancy was running riot along with along those days ahead of her so her fancy fancy means has desire right her desire was running riot riot means violent right her desire was running violent along those days ahead of her which days are going to come to her in her future in her life right she was uh, desirous of that uh, life that she is wanting to live a life of freedom then see spring days and summer days and all sort of days that would be her own so any kind of days that uh, are going to approach to her would be uh, uh, day uh, would be the days of freedom to her whether be spring days whether be summer days winter days or any days right so that she is okay ready to welcome now now you see <clears throat> she breathe the quick prayer that life might be long so she is now taking a deep breath and in her um, breath she is praying to god that her life might be live long right then see it was only yesterday she had thought with a shudder that life might be long so it was only yesterday yesterday means when brenty malad was alive right with a shudder with a tremble that life might be long now she was uh, doubtful yesterday whether she would live a long years of her life right when her husband was present but today right when she heard the demise of her husband mr brenty malad right now she is okay thinking that whether she is able to live her life now she is uh, able to uh, live her life a long life ahead a life of happiness a life of freedom now see she arose at length right so so she arose after a long time right she got up from that armchair after a long time and opened the door to her sister's importunate uh, importunities right and uh, she opened the door on her sister's importunities importunities means um, uh, pleadings beggings right so outside the door josephine was uh, begging her elder sister to open the door and come out right and uh, though she was told to go away but uh, um, yet uh, uh, i mean josephine was uh, stayed there right finally uh, mrs ben, uh, mrs uh, uh, lucy malard had to open the door right and uh, there you see there was a feverish stream in her eyes so there was a feverish stream that means Uh, there was an excited success in her eyes she didn't look okay that sad as she was when she had gone in right now she looked excited right it's the kind of uh, you can say victorious uh, excitement she had when she came out and she carried herself unwittingly like a goddess of victory and she carried out okay, herself right unwittingly that means unintentionally unknowingly right like a goddess of victory right like any goddess who has uh, got uh, uh, victory over the evil right like when she came out from the room she clasped her sister's waist so she caught hold of her sister's waist josephine's waist right and together they descended the stairs and together they came down the stairs right both sisters riches stood waiting for them at the bottom riches was already there waiting for them at the at the ground floor right riches who was riches he was the friend of uh, Mr. Brenty Malad, who brought the news, right? Um, that Brenty Malad is uh, met with an accident and he is no more. 
right so see someone was opening the front door with a latch key and when the three of them again met at the ground floor right after some minutes pass what did they notice right from the outside uh, of the house the main door somebody was opening the front door with a latch key latch key is a key of the outside door right the main door right it was Brentley Mallard so when the door got open there came in right Mr. Brentley Mallard right who was uh, taken to be dead right the news already uh, was brought here that he is no more right met with an accident right train accident so it is a great surprise that Mr. Brentley Mallard was um, back home now you see who entered right a little travel strain and he looked quite uh, tired too exhausted too right travel strain me so okay he looked okay quite tired right then see compositely carrying a grip sack and umbrella so he was carrying a travel bag right a grip sack is a travel bag and he also had an umbrella so he came along with this too inside the room a living body he's not a ghost he's not a soul right he's a living body right an alive person he had been far from the scene of accident so he did not know where the accident took place right he in fact okay had not heard about the train accident right and did not even know there had been one and the, he did not even know that uh, there was a train accident right so he is not dead he is alive right now see he stood amazed at Joseph Ein's piercing cry right so when Brenton Mallard came inside the house the room right Joseph Ein, right the sister of Mrs. Lucy Mallard gave a loud cry of surprise to see right Brenton Mallard right alive and back home right she shouted loudly at Richard's quick motion to screen him from the view of his wife right on the other side right now Richard right was quick enough to uh, run for something right now so he was quick enough to make a motion right to screen to screen means to survey him right from the view of his wife right perhaps okay something occurred here that made Richard to run and uh, uh, assist something right now but riches was too late but it was seen that riches was too late to be there right so when the doctors came they said she had died of heart disease of joy that kills right so that means uh, losing a lot right now so who saw her husband back home right now so she uh, fell down dead because uh, she died of the heart attack because she was already suffering from uh, the heart disease right and uh, she died uh, because of the excessive joy on seeing her husband uh, being back home alive right so you saw here that Richards noticed this right the falling of uh, uh, the falling down of uh, Mrs. Lucy Mallard but before he could catch hold of her right she has fallen down on the floor right later when the doctors were brought in and uh, when she was examined right she was uh, uh, declared dead by the doctors right so you saw here that right so in the in the fraction of the uh, hour right what uh, uh, change took place in the life of Lucy Mallard right she was uh, hoping that she would live a very happy life a life of freedom after the death of her husband right she would not be dominated by anyone but uh, you see right so in just the uh, right now uh, span of one hour right now perhaps okay the story is told here that's why it's hit uh, uh, that's why it's titled the story of an hour um, right uh, mrs lucy Mallard lost her life right so she she, she died because of because of heart trouble right so because she was uh, uh, excessive uh, um, in her joy to express on seeing her husband back home right so here you see right so when too much of, of uh, joy right is there in a person that also becomes harmful to one's life you see right so you saw right whose death was talked in the beginning of the story mr brinti Mallard right and finally who's that took place right all right so mr brenton Mallard was back home all safe and fine in fact he did not know there was a train accident even right he was uh, safe he was uh, nowhere of the news right he's back home as he was right but uh, look at who's that took place right mrs lucy Mallard died because of the 
heart problem that she was suffering from on seeing the uh, husband back home. She was very much overjoyed on seeing the husband back home. And that caused the death of her um, life, you see, right? So you understood here that the death is unavoidable, right? The death's arrival is unavoidable. When the death comes to a man, right, you can't avoid it, right? The death takes you, right? But to whom the death comes is known only to death, right? And at the same time, you saw, play time becomes uh, elastic and flexible within an hour, right? So in the in the fraction of uh, time, you see what change uh, takes place uh, in a person's life, right? And it also tells us here that news of somebody's demise, if told the wrong way, right, uh, may prove to be little, right? So which means that uh, when uh, the news is told in a wrong way without confirmation, without having the full uh, knowledge on it, without having the solid proof on it, right, it may bring right harm to others, right? So it may be destructive in the life of the others, right? So we need to be very, very careful when bringing any such news before uh, scrutinizing those news and uh, uh, making it uh, foolproof, right? The news should not be delivered to anyone that may cause even to a death of a person, right? Such is told here. So you see that, right? So it's very difficult to decide, yes or no? what happens in the span of time, right? So we need to be very, very careful, right? So we should uh, be very, uh, very careful in checking ourselves. And in the same way, we should be very, very careful in uh, delivering any kind of news, right? So without knowing uh, completely on the uh, incident that has taken place, we should not bring such news to uh, harm others' life. That is told in this story, the story of an art. So hope this story is understood. Mm -hmm. So you'll be writing the note when I'll provide you, right? And uh, with this, I hope we have completed the chapter, the story of an hour, right? Thank you very much.